Hi and welcome to the Air Manager API tutorial video series. In this video we're going to be looking at hardware, character displays. So currently uh, with the character displays um, the only uh, one that you can do is the Max 7219 um, but there are um, 8 segment and um, LCD displays uh, come in that, that use the HD44 uh, 780 uh, driver chip. But for this video, we're just going to focus on these um, these Max 7219 modules, which are quite popular and um, relatively cheap um, to um, set up um, an array of uh, seven segment displays. Uh, on a long module like this. So the, the Max 7219 chips can drive up to 8 so you can see these modules tend to come with um, two banks of 4 here. And so let's get um, stuck into the uh, the code. Um, so just going back to the, um, the main page here there's three uh, functions that are related to the character displays and they behave slightly differently depending on which one um, you're dealing with but because we're looking at the Max 7219 all three of these apply uh, to that um, so you add the uh, particular display and give it an ID in, in typical fashion for lots of the other API functions that we've looked at all, already uh, there is a function to allow you to set and change the uh, text that appears on the display and then another function that enables you to set and change the uh, brightness. So let's um, let's delve into our uh, our code. So what we've got um, set up here um, is an add, um, and then some functions to set the brightness, and then some functions to uh, to uh, change the uh, text. So all three of the functions. Um, that are available uh, we're going to show and demonstrate here so just quickly what I'm going to show you is what we've got set up here um, let's turn the camera on very quickly so what we have here is a couple of uh, modules they're daisy chain so um, I think the one at the top is the uh, the first display in the um, in the chain and the one at the bottom is the uh, second um, so essentially all you need is um, three pins um, obviously you have to apply power and ground uh, to the module so there's there are there was only um, you can just see down the um, left hand side uh, of the module there there's three uh, or five um, solder pins so two of those are power and ground and then the other three are the three signal pins that you need so you only actually need three Arduino pins um, to run uh, up to four modules I think it is um, in a sequence like this so um, very good in terms of the fact that uh, it keeps the IO count quite low so what we've got set up here then is obviously the two modules um, and we'll go ahead and look at the code that we used to set up for that so the hardware character display add is the main uh, function we give it an ID as usual so I've called it display uh, underscore character underscore ID and we're saying it's of the max 721 type so you can see I've got the structure of the function uh, listed across the top here and you can see that after the add you have to specify the type so on the wiki page it tells you what the three types are that you can put in there so because we're doing max 7219 today we put that in there the number of displays oh, we've got a four in there that really should be two although it really doesn't matter if you put the number in the more there because it's just sending out uh, writes to two other displays that are just not physically connected uh, in in the chain here um, but we'll change it back to two just so that we're correct so there's our two displays and then we give it the the um, the three Arduino uh, pins for the corresponding pins uh, of the module so on the um, let's just go back to the wiki page for very quickly so for max 7219 this is um, the data pin the clock pin and the load pin so they're marked on the little modules when you get them you might find sometimes the load pin is referred to as CS or chip select 
but that would be the load pin but the other one other two should be marked either di for data in and then you might see on the other end uh, for daisy chaining purposes um, a d out so that d out of that module feeds into the d in of the next uh, module and then a clock pin and then as i said a load pin or or sometimes labeled as cs chip select so they're the three Arduino pins in the correct order. You must remember to get them in the correct uh, order. Uh, and that is essentially the um, the add statement. And then the next lines here are, because I have two displays, are referring to setting the brightness. So you can set the brightness independently. It's not for the whole chain. It's, it's each of the modules independently. So you can see here in the structure that, again, I've got commented out here, where you give it the ID so we've created the ID display character ID up here so all we need to do using the the brightness function is hardware character display set brightness which is the name of the function the ID that we uh, set up up here which is display underscore character ID the number of the display as you can see here so in the first instance display zero it starts counting from zero so the one at the top is zero and the one at the bottom is one and then the actual brightness number. Now the brightness will be a number anywhere from 0 to 1. So 1 being full brightness and 0 being uh, no brightness at all. So you can see here I've chosen as the in, uh, initial set values here as 0.1. If you don't use this brightness, um, I think this add just puts the brightness in as uh, 1. So full brightness. Uh, but we can see that in operation in a minute. We can, we can comment them out and you'll see what happens. And then here... Um, we've used again because we've used two brightnesses one for each of the displays we're going to use two uh, text sets or set texts as they're called so hardware underscore character display underscore set text um, and then we use the ID again uh, from up here display character ID so they're both exactly the same there because it's the same ID that we use to create the whole uh, chain but then we refer specifically to the, dis the, the display we want to set the text on so in this case it's zero for this the top one and in this case it's one for the bottom display uh, and then we say which line actually this doesn't matter uh, for these modules that could be a zero or, or a, uh, a one there um, that applies to um, say when we're on the LCD um, module um, where it has multiple lines on the display and you want to actually send the text to one of those lines uh, so the line is is ignored really for this uh, this function when you're using the max 7219s so we'll set them both to zero for the moment just to show you that doesn't make any difference and then the actual um, data that you want to appear on the display so I'm just simulating an active and a standby frequency here and as you can see just above these two um, set text uh, functions I've just set up what the active and the standby frequency are so I've chosen the top one to be active the bottom one to be standby and because this needs to be a, a text um, string in here um, I've used numbers as if they were coming from the SIM, so we may choose uh, to subscribe to some data from the SIM that gets us the actual frequency, so in this case 120.075, and I'm going to convert that to a string using the to string function, and you can see here I've just added one blank space, uh, space onto the end, that's because these frequencies are only six digits, these are eight digit uh, modules, so I want uh, an empty space to appear on the end so it's important to know when you put this text in there if you were just to put the number 12 in there the 12 would appear in the two rightmost digits so it always uh, feeds from that right hand end um, so if you want it centralized in the display you have to pad it out uh, with blanks to get it to shift along to the appropriate position so we're just going to pad it with one blank there just so that we ignore the one on the very right hand end and then we put the six digits in the middle there and then we should have a, obviously a blank at the other end but we don't need to to give it that because um, we're just not giving any data for that so it fills from the right hand end it's an important thing to note so let's go ahead and um, run this code and uh, you'll see the effect of uh, what we what we get obviously there you go so as soon as we've run the instrument there we get our 120.075 which is uh, from our uh, top display and our 133.455 on the bottom display so what I'll go ahead and demonstrate now is um, let's just take these um, or let's take one of the brightnesses out just so you can see the differences let's take the brightness out for the for the top um, example and we'll rerun the instrument 
and you can now see all oh, that the top one is now at full brightness so that's at uh, 120.075 um, and a brightness of one for that top one um, and obviously you can play with those um, you can see so that's the default of one but you can obviously play with those uh, numbers and um, let's say make it uh, 0.3 it's a bit difficult to see the full effects of the brightness with the camera here but um, that is somewhat dimmer than the full brightness of one but obviously brighter than the 0.1 of the bottom display you can probably see that uh, on the camera to a certain extent there so let's just put that back to 0.1 very quickly so that's the brightness quite straightforward so you can control each display independently if you wish to you'd probably want to make them all the same but um, that's how you do it with the, with the set brightness um, function and then obviously the set text you can just change these numbers you'd end up with a, a, a different uh, result there so let's just change that to I don't know 118 really easy there you go 118075 and then just another uh, little thing that um, I've just done for a little bit of fun there just to sh um, show you in terms of probably a more practical use for how you'd use is if you were using these to, uh, to uh, actually run some hardware displays for some radios just a little bit further down in the code here I've just set up a, a way of toggling between these two uh, frequency and I've just set up a very basic button on our uh, instrument here so it's a blank just a blank button on our instrument here but um, whenever we toggle this button this code here essentially is just going to toggle the the uh, frequency so you can see how quickly the displays actually update so when I click the button there there we go it's flipped the the active and the standby frequencies between the two displays and back again back right so you can see it updates and toggles uh, very quickly every time I uh, every time I click that button so that's more of a sort of practical use for uh, how you'd use uh, those uh, particular displays. I say you can daisy chain up to four of these, I believe it is. Um, so you can see that just with a few hardware pins, so you could actually get quite a lot of um, displays out of that in terms of uh, common nav and uh, whatever else you wanted to use these uh, particular uh, displays for. So I think that's uh, it really, it's fairly straightforward in terms of running the uh, the character displays. Um, you obviously don't have to use um, RED, these are just some pre-built uh, modules using the Max721 uh, um, chip. Um, you could obviously make your, your, your own um, modules up or uh, see if you can find some other modules that are in different colours or different sizes of displays but the concept is obviously still the same. So I think that concludes this video. Please join us again for another video soon. Thanks. Bye.